You know, I've always liked fighting. When I uh, started out kickboxing when I was 15, we would fight, fight in tough man contests and like any style of fighting, I would use kickboxing when I was fighting that. Kickboxing's always been my shit, like my focus. Um, but sometimes I had breaks where I couldn't get kickboxing fights, so I would do boxing fights and I would do MMA fights. And right now I'm at like the elite level in kickboxing and uh, doing really well. So if I, as long as I can stay busy doing that, that's what I'm gonna do. But I, uh, you know, there's a lot of money and opportunity in MMA and uh, all the guys that I end up training with for all their high level MMA fights. Uh, you know, they all think I should try and do it again, so we'll see what happens. I opened my own gym with my coach, like 15, god damn, we're getting old, like 15 years ago, maybe, 10, 12, some long ass time ago. And uh, coaching and repeating what you're doing, and, and uh, yeah, the whole mindset is completely different from when you're, uh, you know, when you teach somebody the, fu the fundamentals, you're, you're repetitively looking at, at what mistakes they're making or whatever, and that translates really well into, into yourself and making sure that you do it correctly. And then when I'm sparring, I'm in a fight, I'm seeing the mistakes they're making. So it's a, I think training and being a coach is, is a huge part of, of uh, my success. Other fighters are fans of, of mine, you know, that's why they, they bring me in for sparring or whatnot. And when you can, they bring me in because I'm the best kickboxer in my weight division in the world and uh, you know if Nick Diaz is going against Anderson Silva why wouldn't he want to spar with Joe Schilling you know or Cowboy Cerrone is getting into it with uh, Matt Brown or you know all the guys that I work with on a regular basis they bring me in because of, you know, I'm the best in the world at what I do that gives them that mental edge of like all right I'm not anything this guy does I'm ready for it I've seen that so uh, I've been lucky to meet and be brought into training with certain certain high-level guys and uh, I became friends with them it's good I'm really proud of what I've done for the sport of kickboxing and its growth and I think, I'm, I think there's a lot of light and attention being paid to kickboxing now in the U.S. and you know I'm at the forefront of that and you know, I feel good about that so uh, but yeah but if there's any MMA guys want to catch these hands. Being a fighter is really there's all kinds of aspects you know you have the physical aspect of being sore and being hurt and then you have the, the mental aspect of anxiety and stress and we're in this is a blood sport you know that we're in and eight weeks this guy's gonna try to kill you and everybody is worried about it and everyone's training and trying to get you as, as mentally and physically prepared as possible it's a lot of stress it's hard to sleep it's uh, hard. it's nice to uh, to have a break you know throughout the day if I have to wake up and, and super sore and I have to go run five miles, I don't want to do it. I'll smoke a joint on the way and kind of zone out during my run and uh, put my mind in another place. So that's, uh, that's another big part of uh, cannabis for me. Uh, I guess I've always used cannabis since since I was a kid. I just, uh, as I've gotten older, the the reasons behind it and uh, the more I've learned about it, you know, I've changed quite a bit, you know. You know, my coach today before I, I hit pads with him, asked me if I had any cannabis cream because his back was bothering him and I put some Flavor X roll-on gel on it. I was knocking the shit out of him today. He's 65 years old, so, uh, you know, I think cannabis has so many uses now with, you know, for muscle pain and rub-on creams. And, you know, CBD is really good for your immune system recovery-wise, so I use it. I think cannabis in the martial arts community has been like a big thing for a long time. I think uh, a whole underculture of, of cannabis and martial arts. To get you, open your consciousness a little bit to you know, feel more, to be more internal. I know a lot of high level uh, martial artists and athletes smoke cannabis and basketball players and football players and, and athletes in general and artists and musicians. And uh, I hate the stigma that goes along with, with cannabis, you know. You smoke weed, so you're like lazy and don't do anything. No, I do a lot of shit all the time. That's really what bothers me most about the uh, stigma that comes with cannabis is that you're lazy. Because if you're lazy, you're gonna be lazy. The cannabis industry is, uh, it's really exciting to watch right now. There's so much stuff going on. So many big time Wall Street guys coming in and buying up stuff, uh, big companies evolving. I think uh, I'm really excited about it. I, I can already see like, a like an awakening or whatever. Like even if worst case scenario, they canceled everything and took away all the rights again. Like my mom sees cannabis different than she did 10 years ago, you know? Grandparents, so elder people, you know, they're, uh, there's definitely uh, the, the reefer madness era is kind of wearing off and people are waking up and that's really exciting. I think, uh, you know, cannabis was a, helped my dad a lot when uh, he was battling cancer before he died. And uh, you know, I think it's, um, it's a it's a great it's a great thing for everybody and you know the more 
the more it grows, the you know, look at Colorado and those other states that are fully legalized. All the money they're bringing in for schools and, and stuff, you know, it's great. So I think uh, I'm excited. I'm Joe Schilling and I'm living the dope life.